What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, taking you along for a day of fishing. Got five or six hours out on the water, Lake Chickamauga. Uh, I'm kind of torn, I don't know if I should stay shallow, throw top water and frogs, or uh, go out on the ledges and throw cranks and flutter spoons. Uh, totally depends on the current, but should be a good day. Let's go. Little guy blew up right next to the boat. Thanks, buddy. Oh. I saw that. Don't want to miss that one. All right, guys, so just started here um, right at the launch, launch ramp. And in the intro, I was kind of talking, didn't know, sure, wasn't sure what I was going to do, either stay shallow, go deep, it totally depends on current. Um, started just kind of troll motoring my way out, fishing through, and uh, saw some bait up in the shallows in the shade. And uh, they started blowing up on them. Caught one, caught a little guy, probably a pound, pound and a half. And then um, hopefully you guys can hear the blow up, but uh, missed one that was probably four, four and a half that ate it, hooked it and came off. But um, I was talking to these guys, just met, uh, met these guys, they're locals and uh, watched the stuff. So we had a little chat, but um, sounds like there's not any current, but we're still gonna fish around and see if we can figure it out. Uh, started throwing that shower blows, that, uh, that chrome shower blows, gunfish works too. Um, just fishing that shade. You know, recently um, talked about, you know, the shade lines, fishing the shade, how the sun high positions fish, but uh, the, the bait will like to get way up in that shade, in the shade up in the shallows, and the bass can kind of corral them and use that shoreline as like a fence, as a corral to, to really push the bait. So um, maybe we'll run across that again and, uh, and convert. Got him. Don't spike me. <laughs> Knocked the slack out of my line. Dude. But it's really important that you fish. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go ahead and do this with the pliers. That way I'm not shooting a how to remove a hook out of your hand video. But it's really important that you, there you go, fish around these guys or through them because the largemouth will be right mixed in with them. Notice out here feeding on this ball of bait I can see on, uh, on live. But it's interesting you go through one or a few of those and then all of a sudden it turns into largemouth so don't run from them fish through them if you can
my big old drum. <laughs> I saw those fish out there, threw to them. It's like a 15 pound drum just owned me. Hopefully there's some bass mix in there. So there is a little bit of current. Came out to one of these uh, ledges and uh, just looking for bait, looking for active fish on the side imaging, down imaging, and then forward facing sonar. But uh, yeah, let's try and catch a bass. <laughs> it is just one of those days. So I've caught whites, I've caught a drum, now I've caught a big old bluegill. <laughs> a little bass. It's just one of those days. Thanks, bud. All right, I'm gonna throw a bigger bait. There's definitely fish active down there. I can see them on the on the 2D and the and the and the live. Um, so I'm making my cast, my accurate cast, but it's all little whites and yellows. But I was telling you before, you know, we've caught plenty of big largemouth mixed in there, so. I'm gonna pick up a little bit bigger spoon and see if I can eliminate those little bites. Try and get one of the bigger bites. Answers that. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days. This is another drum. What would today be without a catfish? I don't want to even bring this guy up on the boat. <laughs> I might set a record today for different species caught in a day. But we do have one bass, so that's a bonus. But uh, I think it's time to make a move. Days like this, you got to cover a lot of water. You know, I was hoping that last spot but eventually I'd, I'd weed through the little guys and find a school of bass because there was bait all over that that ledge uh, and I could see the fish eat, you know, blowing up through them and, and feeding on them, uh, just no bass. So I uh, do have a little bit of a current, so a little bit of current, so that's good. I'm gonna continue to run some offshore stuff, uh, use the electronic side imaging, down imaging, trying to find uh, some bass, some actively feeding bass. <laughs> uh, I've caught everything but today. Catfish, drum, bluegill, white, yellow. Um, just one of those days. But um, hopefully, so here's the game plan. I've got some bait right here on side imaging. The game plan is to side image some of these ledges. Uh, if I don't come across the school, then I will completely switch gears, put away the deep stuff, the ledge stuff, and go shallow frogs, swim jigs, top water, that sort of stuff, and see if we can find some active fish in the backs of some of these little cuts. But uh, it's just one of those days, you know, it, it happens, but I'm still having 
fun catching a ton of fish, just the wrong species. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can find a mega school that's active, and if not, we'll go shallow. Back to the right species. <laughs> Got that underspin. <laughs> Thanks, bud. That is a size bait that they're eating. Little tiny thread fin. So it's really hard to uh, to catch them on the bigger stuff, especially they're keyed in on that little tiny bait. But um, Hopefully this evening we can get them on top water. Right species. It's playing with my Mega Live. Oh, this guy ate it off the bottom. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Left the ledge thing. You know, there wasn't much current going. Uh, couldn't find a big school of fish, so deci decided to try and go shallow. Came into the back of this arm, uh, fishing eight to 12 foot docks. Um, in hopes to finding uh, bait in the back, fish blowing up, actively feeding on them on surface to throw top water, but then throwing the underspin to try and um, to try and catch any any um, stragglers or fish just out there by themselves. So all I'm doing out here is just kind of covering the flat, looking for little grass edges, fishing the shade lines on the docks uh, between a blade, underspin. And top water and hopefully finish it off in here um, there's a lot of bait I can see on live but um, hopefully that Sun gets low fish will start blowing up and I can catch them pick them off with top water right species pretty sure the bluegill I caught was bigger today but that's why you always have a top water ready that guy right there came up blowing up on top on some bait got it in there and caught a 10 incher too bad it wasn't a six pounder Working. Guys out here chasing bait. <laughs> Don't get. <laughs> Summer bass. Thanks, bud.
<laughs> Another one on the other span. Thanks, dude. These fish are super finicky. If you guys can see out here, oh, there's a blow up right out there. There's little clouds of bait flickering all through here. What these fish are doing, they're down on bottom. It's only like four to eight foot. Uh, and there's rock and stump out here, but uh, they're just waiting for the bait balls to get over the top of them and then they're pushing them to the surface and blowing up on them. But uh, hopefully it gets even better with the low light. But there were some good ones blowing up there uh, a few minutes ago. Sharked it. Come all the way out of the water for it. It's like a two and a half, three pounder. I don't know if you guys could see that or not or if my body was blocking it, but you could see the bait coming up. The, the surface started getting really frantic and they blew up and uh, got my bait out there, ate it, missed it, ate it again, missed it, ate it a third time. I'll catch that fish later, I'm sure of it. But there's so much stuff going on out here. It's just a giant flat. So it's really hard to to uh, target them. I just have the raptors just down and I'm just kind of casting out here where I've seen the most activity. And uh, all I need is that bait ball to get close to where those bass are sitting on the bottom. And then it's go time. my tail. Thanks dude. Not the biggest bass, but at least it's a bass. After the way today started, I'm happy with the right species. But this is a lot of fun. Eating the swim bait and then uh, coming up on top. Hopefully uh, get a big one. I'm using that uh, Gamakatsu underspin. It has that screw lock on there. So it's really nice because you can catch multiple fish without tearing the Kitek. Those that those of you that fish Kitex before know one they're not they're not cheap and two they're soft so having that screw lock on there really holds that bait into place and lets you catch a lot more fish on one bait than you normally could on any other swim bait head or underspin without that screw lock. So you rig it normally and then you just swim uh, spin that spin the bait on and wrap the tail around the hook and just slowly corkscrew it on and it's on there nice and tight
that's what we're talking about right there, guys. That's a good one. Good, good on that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got that flutter spoon. There's not a lot that mimic dying bait fish better than that Nichols hunk of metal. Look at the gut on that thing. That's a fatty. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That's what we're talking about. Just having to rotate baits. Next bait I'll pick up is probably that little uh, little blade bait, but this is that six inch flutter spoon. You know, I'm seeing, I'm sure you guys have seen some of this, some of these baits, not baits, some of the bait skipping out of the surface. It's anywhere from three to six inches, so. So I went with that guy right there and finally got the kicker that I needed. So much fun. Oh, burrito getting the jumbo. <laughs> nice fish. Crack that swim bait. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Oh. Clobbered that swim bait. That's that five inch burrito. Bait is money. Whew. Thanks, Buka. That gets your heart pumping. Just shows guys, fishing's fishing. You just gotta go through, go through the day. Go through the day and just keep putting the pieces together. You know, I stumbled into this. Um, once I got off the deep water, the ledges, I wanted to find a, a deeper dock bite, shade line. So I came back here for these deeper docks, caught one on the underspin, and then just saw the bait out here swimming. And uh, every once in a while, there was big ones. I told you earlier in the video, those were big ones out there. Well, that was one of them. You know, there's probably, you know, five or six more that size over here cruising, but they're chasing big, big uh, thread fins. Let's see if we can get another one.
usually if there's only one blow up and they don't keep coming, it means they hit their mark and they shot back down. seeing this Two big schools, one here, one there. Push the bait to the surface. For a second, I didn't even know where to throw, left or right. Seemed more active on the right, threw in there. They kept blowing up around me and then finally one ate. Not, the, not a big one, but came off. So many fish right here. <laughs> Breakfast burrito choked. <laughs> They've been cracking it, and I'm swinging and missing. That time I cracked it, swung and missed, let it sit there, and popped it again. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Absolutely knocking the fire out of Dude, switched it up a little bit.
another nice one. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how many fish are here, but there's a ton of bait. And I feel like I can sit here and just beat on them. But... So how you work this thing, I'll have to do another in-depth spoon video, but fire it out there, engage the reel, watch your line like a Senko bite. This thing's falling. Sometimes I'll hit on the initial fall. Okay, I'm on bottom. You want a rod that you can leverage the handle with, so pop, let it fall. It's walking down. Pop, let it fall. You guys see these? A lot of times on that slack line, you'll feel the dunk and you'll see your line jump. You'll reel down and swing. Sometimes, oh, just whack one right there. But anyways, letting it fall in slack line, tunk, or you won't feel anything, reel down to do that next pull, and it's there. Um, normally, I run a bobber stop about two to three inches above uh, where I'm tied on, and I have a free sliding um, treble hook, feathered treble, because when this thing's falling, you have a 50-50 chance of it eating the head or the hook side with the tail. So I like to run that stinger and it just helps you get more of those bites in the boat. But guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, what a grind of a day and it turned out to be an absolute riot. I don't know how many three pounders I caught, but I caught some really quality fish. I caught that one, it was like a five pounder and that one that was probably close to seven, high six, low seven. Thing was fat, just smashed that burrito. Um, but a grind, again, went out, checked the ledges, checked the deep bite, tons of fish out there, but not the right species. Um, but it was really cool to play with that, uh, that li a mega live up there and really dial in where those fish were. And, and more importantly, learning the distance uh, those of you guys that are newer to the the forward facing sonar you have to really learn you know what 60 feet is or what 90 feet is i had it set today at 100 to 120 feet out reading clear so i could see where those fish were at and then just learning the the distance for those casts and man sure sure enough as soon as i would get right to where they, those fish were they were on that uh, little blade bait but um i'd say the the two winners today three winners guy right there the nickels that flutter spoon just like every video guys i'll link everything down below in the video description rods gear all that stuff next one's gonna be that underspin just more of a a finesse presentation i don't know how many fish i caught on that today but some good ones and then that uh that buca burrito that guy right there, um, that five inch, that thing is absolutely money. Um, not sure when this color is gonna be released, but it's a special color coming to you guys in the near future. Uh, and we had something to, to do with designing the color. So really, really excited about that. And you guys see that it works. They straight smash that thing. So um, guys, if you like this video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, you know, turn on notifications. We're well on our way. We passed that half a million mark, so it's it's amazing. That was our goal this year. So thank you, guys. But uh, try and do a lot of instructional and then some fishing. That way we mix it up with you guys and uh, do at least one fishing video a week and then instructional videos. And um, But guys, I had fun. It was a grinder this afternoon. 
just ran through different patterns, seeing what might work, what I thought would work. Um, started right off the bat where I launched and had those fish up shallow, blown up. And believe it or not, in the day, up shallow with fish blowing up. In the middle, tried that deep bite and it just wasn't there. I'm sure it'll turn on sometime today or tomorrow, but um, that's all current driven and it's, uh, it's hard to try in time. But um, guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. We'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Like I said, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.